Subscribe! Hello, fellow travelers, and welcome to my four year Genshin Impact account review. It has been a hot minute since I last reviewed my account. I believe my last video on it was two years ago. So if you are interested in watching that, I'll link it in the description below. For some reason on that video, I was whispering. It's so, sort of like an ASMR account review. And the reason for that was because on that day I had gotten sick or I had been sick for a couple of days and my throat was just dead. It, when I spoke, I sounded like a frog. And so I was like, oh, I have nothing better to do. I don't know what was in my head, but for some reason it's the most viewed video on my YouTube account. So yeah there is that anyway let's continue first off what kind of account is this this is full disclaimer this is a dolphin account i do buy the welkin moon and i do buy the battle pass almost like almost every single time i think i've only missed buying the battle pass twice in the four years i have been playing was it twice or just once i'm not sure but um i do buy the battle pass and also sometimes i buy the ones with the um name card on them so as you can see i've had like I have a few battle pass theme cards to my name i think it started the very first one i bought was this one and um, I just skip sometimes if I don't like the name card. Like for example, um, this one, I would skip if I didn't like the name card. But usually I do buy the name card because the art is just so pretty. And I don't know, I just like, for some reason, I just like collecting the good ones. I do also buy Genesis crystals on this account. I think the right term is like a dolphin account. So I do buy the Genesis crystals if I feel like... I want to get this character and I don't have enough or I want to get their weapon and I don't have enough. So I do buy. I only spend if I feel like I really want the character. So again, spend responsibly. And um, if you feel like uh, you don't have extra funds, then don't spend. So anyway, to continue, what's interesting in this account is that um, I have quite a few five star weapons as you can see i have a few dupes on some limited five stars and that's because i they've had a rerun on a weapon banner that had like a weapon that i wanted like for example i remember on nuvelet's weapon banner um he had a rerun with kazuha's weapon which i wanted so i eventually got kazuha's weapon on just recently on Mualani's banner so stuff like that like I would get um, dupes of weapons simply because they had a rerun with weapons that I liked I have like quite a few five-star weapons so we'll li take a look at them closer when we review the characters so as for artifacts i have i'm not like a big fan of farming artifacts so i only have a few and for some reason i only i always seem to like have not enough artifacts to fodder like to use to level an artifact to 90 and maybe that's also because this account is more horizontally invested like i would stop farming an artifact set if I feel like it's good enough, like not excellent, but just good enough simply because of the number of characters that I pull for. Like for example, Navia's flower, look at this. It's not that good. It's mid and her feather is also mid. So her sands, like they're just mid artifacts and I would stop farming them because I have other characters to focus on. And I would say that this is a definitely more horizontally invested account. So you're not going to see crazy builds, but I suppose we'll take a look at them later. As for um, items, I don't have, like, I think it's a regular amount. What's interesting here? Nothing really. Like, I only have 16 crowns left. Although I have, like, uh, I have been playing for so long that doesn't really matter if i triple crown a character every now and then because i just have so many crowns left over and for the food uh i do like sometimes to get a thousand um copies of food that i find really useful like this 
delicious Mondstadt hash brown and this delicious chicken burger. I have a thousand of them and this also. So there was a time in Genshin Impact's history when um, statues did not have as much HP as it did now, I think. Especially after the uh, World 9 Ascension. So statues would be limited in how much they would heal you because they would be capped at like 50,000 HP. And when you heal your 30,000 HP Zhongli, you'd be left with like 20,000 and what if your whole team is dead so it's not enough to heal all of them so I had to like make a lot of food to compensate for that so yeah uh, that's it yeah nothing too interesting here I have these billets and uh what is what else what else what else yeah nothing too interesting here just billets and some fish and these are the um, gadgets. I think I have nearly all of them except for one Sealy that I missed because uh, I missed one event, one Sealy event. I didn't do it because that was one of the times when I had like burnout from playing Genshin but you know uh, I did come back and get like as most of the gadgets that I can. So as for quest items, like nothing to see here. They're just, you either have them or you don't, you know? So yeah. And then precious items. Oh yeah, this is interesting. Uh, I have four cakes and not five because I inputted my real birthday on my Genshin account. And um, my birthday was a year after I started playing so it's perfect because um I, they gave me a cake like literally on my birthday and i would open them and i've never missed a single one so how sad is that right like you play genshin on the day of your birth and it's supposed to be like a day for celebration but here i am opening my mail every time i have a birthday just because i don't want to miss my birthday cakes okay um yeah and teapot yeah nothing too interesting here either but i do have some items like limited edition from the battle pass that you only get when you buy the battle pass uh but i won't show them to you because i don't really i'm not really that interested in the teapot okay for my characters uh i think i'm gonna show you this tier list that i made and um i'm not gonna show you every single character that i own just that i'm gonna like talk about my favorite characters and the characters I'm gonna build in the future. Also some of characters that I regret pulling for or I regret building. So how this tier list works is that I have like an S tier, an A plus tier, A minus tier, a B tier, a C tier, and a D tier. And the S tier is the sentimental value characters that I have. Like these characters are characters that I just love, I adore for some reason that's totally subjective and um, for personal reasons. So yeah, A plus characters are what I consider awesome characters, um, characters that I like to play with because they're just amazing at what they do. And there, there's an A minus tier, a tier that some um, uh, characters where they're not built yet, but I am planning on building them. And then there's B tier. So B tier is built, but not my fave. And we're probably going to skip this tier because it's not that interesting. They're just characters that I already built, but they're not my favorite. You know, I just don't find their gameplay that interesting. And C tier is characters that I regret building or pulling for. It's either or. So... Uh, as you can see, we have Ayaka, Ayato, the Kamisaro siblings there. Sino, Child, uh, Yula, Shinyan, I regret building, and also Razor and Chi Chi. And uh, for D tier is uh, the, the last tier, it's the didn't bother building tier. And these are just characters that I have that are sitting in my account, unbuilt, probably level 20 to 40, and never gonna go past that like for forever but yeah um let's start with the first tier okay klee so i love klee she's my first ever five star and she is at the number one spot the thing with klee is she was my first ever five star i got her on her first banner and i got two copies of her on her first banner i was just wishing and wishing and then 
I got her on like 40 pulls. It was early. And then uh, I think like 30 pulls later, I got another copy of her. So it was really early. It was really lucky. And I just loved her from the very start. And I still love her to today. She's not as strong as some of my other characters. But she is, for some reason, she's C2. Okay, there's a story behind this. And that is that I had always wanted to C4 my Klee because she's explosive on C4, you know, you know, get it? And I wanted to C4 my Klee, but then eventually as more and more characters got released, I decided to stop. But like, yeah, this is my Klee. I love her. I bought her skin. She is adorable. She is so cute and I love her so much. She's my firstborn child. She is using the solar pearl, but sometimes... I do switch it out for like the Lost Prayer to the Sacred Winds if I feel like she needs more crit rate and some more damage. As for artifacts, right now she's using um, two piece, two piece. So her talents are 10, 9, 9. So there is that. Yeah. So this is my Klee. The next character on my S tier account is Wanderer. So Wanderer, I just, I just loved his character when he first had his like release banner i didn't wish for him and the reason why was because i hadn't yet done his story quest in sumeru and i just thought that oh um i just watched reviews on youtube didn't play his story quest and um just uh waited to uh, skip him because the the banner after him was I believe someone I really wanted to get also so yeah I've skipped his first banner but then but then after I did his story quest after I did the Sumeru Archon quest I was just man I don't know there's something about this tragic character that I just really really like that really calls to me so Aragorn I named him Aragorn um, because number one, I am an LOTR fan. I just love Lord of the Rings. And number two, I think it sort of fits. Although they have like totally different personalities. It's just that Aragorn in the Lord of the Rings is the wandering king of Gondor. Right? So Aragorn equals wandering king equals wanderer so that's why i named him aragorn so yeah and you might um notice that i have like uh my name eowyn is also from lord of the rings it's just like a different um stylized spelling because you know your girl loves her lotr so just uh let's leave it at that so anyway um his weapon is the Lost Prayer to the Sacred Winds, and his artifacts are not very good either. They're just enough to sustain, like, to give him, like, a decent build, but not a crazy one. So, yeah, these are his artifacts, his animal damage. Bonus Goblet, though, is pretty good. I think I like this one a lot. I think it's my best a animal damage bonus Goblet. And then crit damage, um, circlet. So, uh, these are his ratios. It's a 78% crit rate, 185 crit damage, nothing too crazy, just, you know, regular build. And then his talents are 999. Okay, hear me out. I did plan on triple crowning him, but I just, I just thought the resources were, you know, too steep for me. And uh, I was building so many characters also. And so, yeah, he's stuck at 999 for now. Maybe if I do get his weapon in the future, I will give him the crowns that he deserves because, you know, he is a king. But yeah, for now, he is at C0, 999 talents. Okay, next. Um, the next character on our sentimental value tier list is Raiden Shogun. I think it's criminal that Raiden Shogun is right next to Wanderer because he uh, hates her so much, you know, but Raiden Shogun is one of my strongest characters. She's just like 
there like every single time i do the abyss and i 36 star the abyss she's always there she has her signature weapon the engulfing lightning her artifacts are i think one of the best ones i have on this account and her constellation like i have the c3 raiden so you can probably tell that i just really really like her character her talents are of course 10 13 uh, for some reason i left her normal attack at 8 but she has this a uh, flower, this feather, this energy recharge sands. So I used the artifact transmuter to actually get this piece. And as you can tell, it's not that good. It's mid at best. And yeah, I did kind of regret doing that. But uh, her previous energy recharge sands didn't have crit damage at all and it was pretty bad i'd say oh here it is okay so raiden's old energy recharge sands is this one and as you can see although it has a ton of crit rate it has no crit damage and just elemental mastery to boot so doesn't really um doesn't really look as good as this one so yeah um, her Electro Damage Bonus Goblet is, I think, really good. I farmed it on the Marish Chasse set. And uh, this is insane. I don't think I have a, another goblet that can top this crit value. So, yeah. And her crit rate is mid. Uh, rolled a lot into attack. I would have liked it to roll into crit damage, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. So at least this piece is like everything is usable here. So yeah. So if you look at her attributes, these are her ratios. She has 71.9 crit rate, 147.1 crit damage. I'm really, really close to like the 75% crit rate, 150 crit damage ratio. So I really want to improve on this build some more. However, you know, um, artifacts be artifacting, okay? That's it for my Raiden. Let's look at my next character on the tier list. It's Nahida. Nahida is probably one of my favorite characters simply because she is such a good person. You know, like she just cares so much and she is so wise. Like, well, duh, she's the god of wisdom. But like, aside from that, she's not just wise. She's also emotionally intelligent. Like she has high IQ and high EQ. So like Nahida is one of those characters that I just adore and i love the fact that she's in her chibi form like she's a child you know but like since my all-time favorite genshin impact character is klee this actually works in her favor so yeah um Naheda is C2 and her weapon is R2. So um, there's actually a funny reason why her weapon is R2 like I mentioned before. Um, I got her first weapon in with Nilu like um, on a rerun. And the second copy I got because I was trying to get someone else's weapon but I got hers instead. So yeah that will happen a lot. So Nahida's artifacts aren't too crazy. She's rocking the Deepwood memory set and actually I would say her artifacts are pretty bad. So look at this flower, this feather, this sands, this goblet, and this crit rate helm. It's not looking good. Like, um, yeah, and her ratios reflect that also. Like, she has 55% crit rate and a little bit of crit damage and some energy recharge. And her elemental mastery is also, is also like 834 only. And um, not a thousand because I have like a crit rate helm instead of an elemental mastery one. But you know what? C2, she just, she's just so strong and she actually crits now that um, she's at C2. And um, her talents are 8, 10, 10. And yeah, that's my Nahida. The next character on my list is Hu Tao. So the reason why Hu Tao for me is S tier is because she was one of the characters, the DPS characters that helped me 36 star the Abyss. So she was like the OG pyro dps like she power crept klee and diluc and she was just amazing for so long 
until she got like outshone by Arlequino. But you know, she's still an amazing character. Make no mistake about that. It's just that she's just not as good that now with Arlequino around. So yeah, um, she has an R3 kill me. She has an R3 staff of Homa. And I swear to God, I am not trying to R5 this weapon. It just keeps like she just keeps having a rerun with characters that I really, really like the weapon as well. So yeah, um, that happened. Her artifacts are nothing too crazy. She has this flower, this feather, this sands, elemental mastery and not HP because she's always in a vape team. This pyro damage bonus goblet and this crit rate helm. Her ratios are also kind of mid. She has 64% crit rate and 237% crit damage. Her constellation, she has C1 and her talents are 10, 10, 10. Okay. So yeah, I love Hu Tao and the next character on this list is Ye Lan. So Ye Lan is one of my S tier characters because I just fell in love with her character design, her lore. When the chasm came out, I don't know if a lot of you remember that, but when she first came out, she was this mysterious figure that um hid in the background of Liyue and she was just this informant, like a spy kind of character that gathered information. So yeah, um, she has an R2 Aqua Simulacra. And again, I am not trying to R5 her weapon. It's just that it had a rerun with another weapon that I wanted. I forgot which one, but yeah, I got her at R2 now, so... Yeah. Her artifact set is the emblem of the severed fate. This is her flower. This is her feather. This is her sands, her goblet, and her crit rate helm. Her ratios are nothing too crazy. 74% crit rate, 226% crit damage. And her constellations, she is at C1 for me. I got her at C1 because I like having two charges for her. It extends her rotation a bit, but it solves her energy recharge problems like 100%. And her talents are 8, 10, 10. Now, you might be asking, why is Yaimiko S tier but Fischl is like B tier? And the answer to that is very simple. She's just pink like look at her her hair is pink man like i love characters with pink hair and it does not help at all that she is like a fox you know look at her ears isn't it just so adorable her design is just peak i love her design her character her personality is so mischievous and she's just the embodiment of like a nine-tailed fox in Japanese folklore. She has pink hair. What more can you want? Yeah, she's um one of my favorite characters. Anyway, she has the Witsith at R5. The reason why I don't have her signature weapon is because... You know what? It's actually a very sad story. I have tried getting her weapon three times now. Every time she had a rerun. And I just couldn't get it. I just can't, for the life of me, I just can't win the 50-50-50 to get her weapon. I have lost so many times to get her weapon. It's, it is what it is. So she has the golden troop set and it's nothing too crazy. This is her flower, her feather, this is her sands. I think I like this one, although it did roll once into, I think twice, into energy recharge and just nothing into crit rate. But this is her goblet. This is also pretty good. I would give this to Raiden if it had more crit rate, but um, yeah, it just doesn't, so. Anyway, and this is her crit rate helm. Her ratios are pretty good, 79.5. Oh, and 202.3% crit damage. Her constellation, she's at C1, and her talents are 8, 9, and 10. Yaimiko is one of my favorite characters, and I think when she has a rerun, I'm gonna get her weapon uh, and give her like the, another crown, but that's only when she gets a rerun. So, yeah, that's Yaimiko. The next character on the list is Xiao. So, Xiao for me is S tier 
because much like Hu Tao, Xiao is actually one of the characters that carried me to Abyss. You know, like he was one of the characters who helped me clear the Abyss and you know, he is rocking an R4 Primordial Jade Winged Spear. And you know what's tragic? Is I actually have it at, I can have it at R5. It's just that I'm afraid to put it in because, I don't know, there's just something about like an R5 five star weapon that has me feeling like a whale. Like, I'm not a whale, I am a dolphin, but I have been playing for four years and for some godforsaken reason i just keep getting this weapon whenever i lose the 50 50 50 in the weapon banner it's tragic but yeah uh he, that is his weapon and as you can see he's missing a lot of artifacts and this is because i no longer play Xiao. like he has been benched i think he's in retirement like semi-permanently i only like use him when ever um there's a gimmick going on like like an event needs a plunge character but aside from that i don't think i'm ever gonna use him in the abyss again even if i do have shan yun simply because of the fact that he he's really hard to play for me his play style is really um, clunky now it's not as smooth as the other characters like he's so reliant on shan yun's burst bennett's burst or faruzan's burst that like i just don't like playing him anymore because of those reasons he is c0 and his talents are 989 um but he was my first uh dps character that carried me all the way to end game and i will always love him for that so the next character on my sentimental value list is shunha so there's a reason why she's on this list and it has nothing to do with meta or anything like that. And as you can actually see, I have Ayaka on C tier. In the characters, I regret tier. And um, Shanha is way up. Like, she's in the sentimental value tier. And there's a reason for that. The reason is, Shanha is perhaps the only character that I pulled because of her design like look at her i don't know there's just something about her design that just calls to me i think it's really really good it's really pretty it's gorgeous even like her hair reminds me of like raiden shogun and her wind like hip windows are just so cute i don't know i just when i first saw her character design i was just like wow that is so pretty i'm gonna get it and that was the first time i wished for a character without considering how she is in the meta like that was the first time that i wished purely for her design and when i played her story quest i actually cried her story quest was one of the best quests that i had ever had the pleasure of experiencing in genshin impact there was just something so tragic and so beautiful about that quest that you know like i just loved it so yeah um she has the skyward spine i don't have her signature weapon i don't think i'll ever get it either her artifacts two piece two piece just stack as, as much attack on her as i can so that's her flower feather sands goblet and her circlet and she is c0 and her talents are 199 so yeah i love shanha and um she is s tier for me so the last character in S tier is Noelle. Okay, Noelle is perhaps the only four star character that is in S tier for me. And that, the reason why is because she was my first ever, like my first ever C6 character. He was also my first character that I pulled ever. Like I wished on the beginner's banner and I got her. She was my first character and she carried me through so much content through so much of the early game that she just has a special place in my heart for me and you know what she's also not that bad as like a damage dealer especially if you hyper invest in her so yeah um she <laughs> she has the red horn stone thresher and this is actually ito's weapon but i don't have ito and Noel has his weapon. The reason why? Because like I said, she is S tier. She deserves every single thing that I can 
possibly give her she deserves everything so yeah as for her artifact sets she's actually missing a defense timepiece uh because I, she's actually um sharing a, a timepiece with albedo so yeah um her like i said her constellation is c6 and her talent levels are 9 11 and 12. she is to this day like one of the best characters in my opinion like design wise lore wise so i just have like a very sentimental attachment to noelle okay so moving down a tier you now go to the a plus tier so let's make it quick i'm not gonna be as um in depth in this tier as the previous tier i'm just gonna show you what i have and then move on i'm not gonna comment on much so yeah let's start with nivellet this is nivellet this is his weapon r2 these are his artifacts he has this flower feather sands goblet and crit damage helm his ratios are this 46.6 percent crit rate 322.7 percent crit damage and 29,000 hp which um goes up to 30k if you put him on a team with another hydro user his constellation is um he has one constellation his talents are 1099 so that's nivellet the next character is Farina. Farina is at 39,000 HP. She has the Primordial Jade Cutter. These are her artifacts. These are her attributes. 85% crit rate and 204% crit damage. Nothing too crazy. She is at C0 and her talents are 11010. Next is Arlecchino. Arlecchino has the Ballad of the Fjords at R3. This is a battle pass weapon. And the reason why she's not on the staff of Homa is because I am planning on getting her signature weapon. And her signature weapon has crit rate. So her artifacts are balanced to match. These are her artifacts. Her attributes. She has 71% crit rate and 228% crit damage. Again, nothing too crazy. Her talents are 10, 9, 10. I'm planning on triple crowning her once I get her weapon. Next is Mualani. She's at 37,000 HP. She has the Ring of Yaksha, the free-to-play weapon. These are her artifacts. I'm not farmed an Obsidian Codex set for her yet, but yeah, this is like a stopgap. Before I farm for her real set, I still don't have like good pieces. So yeah, mm. I'll just show you her attributes. This is her crit rate. She has 70% crit rate and 171% crit damage. Nothing too crazy. She's at C0 and her talents are 199. So I plan on getting her to C1 and getting her weapon eventually, but that's uh, way off in the future still. Next is Alhatham. He has his signature weapon. He's at C0. His talents are 10, 10, 10. His artifacts are two piece, two piece. Um, two piece Wanderer set, two piece emblem set. Because I want his burst to be up all the time. And also, I just don't have any good Gilded Dreams pieces. Like, look at this. This is like garbage. So yeah, um, she that's the reason why he's at two piece two piece i might go back and build rebuild him again when i have enough fodder artifacts so yeah um that's my old haytham let's move on to the next character navia is at 2540 attack her weapon is her signature weapon her artifacts are mid like super mid let's go this is her flower her feather her sands her goblet her helm her ratios are not that good it's 82 percent crit rate 181 percent crit damage and she's at c0 her talents are 9 10 9 next is kazuha i love this guy but uh yeah um not enough to put it in the sentimental value tier or the s tier um his weapon is his signature. He has four piece viridescent. I'm not gonna show you anymore because it's just um, they're all mid. 
His constellation, he's at C0, talents at 9, 10, 9. These are his ratios, 41% crit rate, 91% crit damage, and 978 elemental mastery. Nothing too crazy, nothing outstanding, just, you know, like a, a mid Kazo. Next is Zhongli. He has a lot of HP, 50,000. I think he's on like, yeah, the Black Tassel. I still need to build this. He actually used to have like a hybrid build with the Staff of Homa. Uh, but I decided to give him like a, a full HP build just so that I could have like meteor shields. I do need his shields to be the strongest they can be. So I gave him like uh, HP, HP, HP. This is his flower, his feather, his sands, his goblet, his circlet. His at 6, 10, 9. And no constellations. Next, Emily. I love Emily. I think her design is like really good despite the naysayers a lot of people were saying she had a bad design but i beg to differ i like it it's really cute it's really elegant it's really giving um sexy bookworm vibes but that's just me she's at 85 percent crit rate 190 crit damage her weapon is at r2 and there's a reason for this the reason is I got two five stars in one temple and both of those were the Lumidus Elegy. Her artifacts are like Deepwood Memory Set. Nothing too crazy, just, you know, mid all around. She's at C0. Her talents are 199. These are her ratios. Nothing too crazy, again. Next is Kokomi. Kokomi is one of those characters that I think are just... She's just so versatile, you know, she can be like a healer. She can be like a... A driver for a mono hydro team with Furina. She can be a bloom bot. So yeah, she just has so many roles in so many teams. I love her so much. Although I got her on her rerun. Yeah, um, she has the sacrificial fragments. Her artifacts right now are the Gilded Dreams. Sometimes I switch this up depending on what um what's her use, what's her role in the team. C0 talents are 888. Next we have Nilu. The funny story, Nilu is actually like one of the characters that I have at the um, one percent in Akasha. Okay, so this is her build, her usual build. When I use her, she's at two piece, two piece. This is her ratios. I don't know why she has like a lot of crit rate, like nearly fifty percent, and a lot of crit damage and a lot of energy recharge. It's just that her artifacts just rolled really, really well. Like this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. They're just really good pieces overall, and that's why she just has like a really good ranking in the Akasha. She's my only one percent character by the way anyway um her talents are 199 she has constellation zero and yeah that's about it okay next is bennett bennett is definitely one of the best characters in genshin impact like he just has like so many teams and so much use he has a four piece noblesse oblige this is his flower his feather his sands his goblet his crit rate mask his ratios are nothing too crazy crazy 56% crit rate 137 damage energy recharge nearly 250 i just want him to have his burst up all the time his weapon is like the r2 skyward blade the reason why because i like the energy recharge and it has pretty high base attack c6 like i said talent at 6 11 13 next we have shanglinger okay she has the catch i i had a fun slash horrible time um, grinding for this weapon and uh, I think that was the last time I ever fished for a weapon like so diligently because the other fishing weapons I just didn't have at R5 and her emblem of severed faith pieces are okay this is her flower her feather her sands her goblet her crit rate mask i gave her like a lot of energy recharge because i i feel like she actually needs like so much and these are her ratios she has 64 percent crit rate and 124 percent crit damage her constellation she's at c6 talents are 110 12 and yeah that's my shangling next we have sing cho sing cho is i think one of the characters that i built kind of late into my um 
AR level. Like people kept saying he's one of the best characters. He's one of the best characters. But for me, I just didn't like his design that much. Thank God they released his skin. So now I can love him without reservation. I mean, look at his look at his previous outfit. Those shorts are super short. These are better. Okay, so she, he has the sacrificial sword and um, emblem of severed faith pieces again. This is his flower, his feather, his sands, his goblet, his mask. He's at C6, talents are 6, 12, 13. And these are his attributes, 66% crit rate, 125% crit damage. A lot of energy recharge also. He's, his burst is always up um, for me. So next, we have Chevrus. Chevrus is actually C0 for me. Her weapon is a free to obtain one from one of the previous events and I love Chevrus. Tried to get her constellations in the Kinech Raiden banner, but I didn't get any. So yeah, she's still C0. Talents are 166. Her artifacts, she has the Noblesse Oblige, and yeah, nothing too crazy. The next character on the A tier list is Kuki Shinobu. Her weapon is the key of Kajni suit. Do not kill me. I do have two copies of them. It's just that she um she's really good with this weapon because uh she is a she is a hyper bloom bot. Her artifacts, she has the gilded dream set, um, just so that I can uh, stack elemental mastery on her. She has C6. Her talents are 1107. Doesn't really matter, I think, just as long as she has enough elemental mastery to hyper bloom well. So, yeah. I love Kuki Shinobu. Her design is like really cute, also. I just love the little tattoos at the side of her waist. Her mask is really cute. Next is Yao Yao. She's usually rocking uh, Favonius Lance simply because I like her burst to be up all the time and her timepiece is with Emily at the moment, so I'll just put it back for a sec. She is at C6 for me. Her talents are 111-11. I've been planning to 112-12 this for the longest time, but like I said, I just don't have enough materials. So yeah, um, uh, her artifacts, she has the Deepwood memory set. This is her flower, her feather, her sands, her goblet, her, uh, circlet. Attributes, she has 62% crit rate, 119% crit damage. Nothing too crazy. Next we have Venti. Venti is, I think, although he's not as strong as he used to be, not as useful in the Abyss as he used to be, he is still, I think, a very, very good character. He has the Elegy of the End, his artifacts, of course, Viridescent Venerer set. C0, talents are 699, and these are his attributes. He, I built him like a hybrid. He has 55% crit rate, 133% crit damage, and as you can see, his elemental mastery is pretty low. And yeah, uh, I love Venti. He's really fun. He's a really cool character. A bit power corrupt, but still like, you know, still A tier for me. Next in the A tier is Diona. Okay, hear me out. The reason why she's an A tier is because I do like her shield and her heals. I think her shield is pretty strong. She just gives so much comfort when I'm playing the Abyss. She has a R5 Sacrificial Bow. Constellation 6. Talents are 112-12. I think she's just one of the characters that I also really like because <laughs> she's she's a crazy, crazy uh, kitty. You know, like she likes to, she wants to topple the wine industry of Mondstadt. I mean, what is that? But ironically, she has the best like mixology skill in the entire tea of Tevat. Like she can never make a bad drink. Every time she tries, she it just turns out amazing. So that's actually pretty funny to me. Next we have Albedo. Okay, so hear me out. The reason why I really like Albedo and the reason why he's an ace here is because <laughs> His voice acting is just, in English, it's just so, so good. Let's take a moment to just listen to it, shall we? I am Albedo, chief alchemist of the Knights of Favonius. You carry the aura of the stars. Interesting. I would like to study you, if you do not mind. I'm certain we will have many opportunities to be alone in the future. Oh my god, he would like to study me. <laughs> he would like to study me, and we will have many opportunities to be alone in the Okay, uh stop anyway um i just love his character design so much when i first saw him <clears throat> i thought his his lab coat 
was really really cool and he does have like his signature weapon in this in the free to obtain cinnabar spindle um his artifact set, he has the Husk of Opulent Dream set. He is at C0, talents at 199. These are his ratios. He has 53% crit rate, 158% crit damage. Nothing too crazy. And actually, actually, this, these are pretty mid, uh, you know, mid stats. I want this crit rate to be a lot higher. However, I hate this artifact set, man. Like, I farmed it for like a few runs and just enough to get like these pieces yeah that is disgusting look at that like what that's disgusting that too is pretty gross i don't mind this one this is his off piece this one i had to put it on him it's like it has a lot of crit damage and like crit rate and this crit rate helm is just is so mid anyway uh yeah he's he's like so mid like his build is so mid but i still love his character okay last on the a tier is kirara so i love kirara's design especially since uh she got like a free skin i mean look at her boots man she's a puss in boots she's so cute anyway her weapon is the sapwood blade she's actually missing an artifact set because i just got emily so if I just put this back on her so yeah these are her ratios she has some crit rate some crit damage um a lot of hp though i think i built her um full hp yeah hp 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 she is full hp simply because i want her shield to be really tanky i do put her in a bloom team with nilu she's at c4 her talents are 112 9 and yeah i really like Kirara, she's so cute and she's at the she's the last character in the a tier okay for the next tier let's just talk about it really briefly it's the a minus tier it's uh a minus because it stands for about to build i am about to build these five characters shilonan candace layla kole and lisa the reason why is because um shilonen i just got candace i just got to c6 layla i have been wanting to build her for the longest time and i think she's gonna be really relevant once the pyro archon drops kole um for the longest time i've just been wanting to build her but uh sh she's been overshadowed by the um, dendro mc so i held off on building her but now that i have her at c6 i am gonna build her and lisa because I have her at C6. So these are the characters I'm about to build. Let's skip the B tier for now and go to the C tier. The characters that I regret. And uh, there's a reason why. Okay, so for C tier, we have Ayaka. She is one of the characters that I regret the most. And what's the reason? Because she has her signature weapon. She has C2. She's triple crowned. But she, her artifacts are mid. They're all mid. And I don't like her playstyle. Like, I have no idea what I was thinking when I got her. I was just like, oh, um, I'm probably gonna... I'm probably gonna like it sooner or later, but I never did. I never did. And then I just got her at C2 randomly because I kept pulling... Remember that banner that just lasted forever? Remember that? She... She had a banner that lasted for like 200 days. <laughs> because, um... It was COVID and not really 200 days, but it was COVID and um, her banner got extended. So that got her at C2 eventually. So yeah, I regret her character the most. Next we have Ayato. Good thing he doesn't have a signature weapon, but I do regret him also. He's C0. Uh, talents are 188. I just, I just pulled for him kind of late into the game. You know, like he had his secondary run, I think, and I pulled for him. And um, I just don't like his playstyle, and I don't find a use for him in any of my teams. Like so many other Hydro characters, just just does what he can do, but but better, you know. So I don't like him that much. The next character that I re regret is Sino. The reason why is this: I got his signature weapon because I was trying to pull for another weapon, and then I've thought to myself, okay, since I got his weapon, I might as well wish for this character even though i didn't like him so i got him lo and behold i did not like his play style now he is forever benched like, he still has some artifacts but these are all scuffed thank god he's at c0 though 699 in the next of my characters that i regret 
uh, list is Child. Okay, uh, the reason why I regret him so much is because, again, I do not like his playstyle. I pulled for him because of the meta, and I also got his signature weapon because I was trying to wish for Yae Miko's weapon, and I got this instead, so that was like such an L for me. He has no artifacts. C0, talents are 999. Next is Eula. I regret Eula because, well, she does have her signature weapon, and she does have some artifacts. C0. I just regret Eula because, you know, she fell off, and when I first got her, um, she was so met meta because she had been the highest damage dealing character. Uh, she could deal up to a million damage in one, like, burst. Like, it was, she was just, like, huge for numbers. But, you know, playing her is actually kind of really hard, so yeah, she just, she's one of the characters I regret now. Okay, next on the characters that I regret is Shin Yan. I don't regret pulling for her, I just got her C6 accidentally, like, pulling on random banners. But I do regret building her. I mean, she's at level 80, guys. And she has, like, this weapon. She has this weapon. Look at this. It's an R2. I mean, it's so stupid. And I just regret her so much. I regret building her because I just don't like her playstyle. I don't like her character. I don't like her design. I just don't like anything about Shin Yan. And I still built her. So yeah. Next is Razor. I regret building Razor because Razor had been my first main. And I do have him at C6. And this is his weapon. However, um, Razor just, you know, he just he just got power crap so bad. He's a physical damage dealer, and yeah, when when the game first started, he was one of the strongest four-star DPS characters. However, that changed when the Fire Nation attacked. I'm kidding. I just regret building him. I wish I had focused more on Klee instead of Razor when I started playing the game. So yeah, I do regret him. And last, on the characters that I regret list. Chi Chi! I pulled a Chi Chi! I pulled a Chi Chi! Yeah, I just don't- I have her at C5. Just why? I just regret her so much. Okay, so... I think that's it for my characters. If you want to take a look at my tier list, you can pause right here. I'm not going to mention the others because like I said, most of them are built but they're not my favorite. And for the D tier, I just didn't bother building them. I do have them. Okay, so these are the characters that I don't have. I don't have Kinich, Sijuin, Kloran, Chiyori, Risley, Linny, Baiju. I don't have Ito and Yoemiya. But the rest of them I do have. So how many characters is that actually that I don't have that are 5 stars? So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I don't have 9 limited 5 star characters. I think that's on the low side because um, when you think about it, there have been like 80 plus characters released that I only don't have 9. That's crazy. I don't have 10%. So I have 90% of the characters that have been released. Um, which is pretty crazy to me. But then again, I have been playing for four years now and uh yeah this account is just um gonna grow even more in the future i am excited uh to where it's gonna go this has been my four year account review thank you so much if you have stayed for this long i hope you did enjoy yourselves if you enjoyed yourselves i would really appreciate it if you hit that like button and hit that subscribe button so that i can make more videos like this and uh yeah could keep on entertaining you so yeah ha thank you so much for watching to the end at astra abyssosk and i'll see you on my next video bye bye subscribe